Hello everyone, welcome to CLO 7.0 English India webinar. I am Sumina, I am a 3 designer from CLO India office. Today I am going to walk you through some of the great new features that were introduced in the CLO 7.0 as well as some feature improvements. So if you are watching this live and if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat section on your right. So let's jump right into it. In 7.0 release, major improvements within CLO has been made for Macs equipped with Apple Silicon chips. Now CLO runs natively on both Apple Silicon and Intel based Macs. We have worked really hard to make sure the users are able to work faster and easier on these systems. And we will continue to study the optimization of CLO on Apple Silicon. So please look forward to CLO returning with improved performances in the future. Another key update in CLO 7.0 is that we have linked Pantone into CLO to make sure CLO has the most updated Pantone colors possible. You will be able to access the Pantone library within CLO by going into the color window. You can get to the color window by different ways, like by selecting a fabric or a trim or an avatar and so on. Then in your property editor, you can select the color chip and the color window will pop up. Here, you will be able to see that there is a new tab called the Pantone color tab. There is an information icon here, which explains that these colors may not match the Pantone identified standards. Now within this new Pantone color tab, there is a drop down menu where you can find three different color options polyester TSX, cotton TCX, and nylon bright TN. These color options were originally shown as one, two, and three tabs in the previous CLO versions. The rest of the features and options in the color windows are still the same. You will still have all the viewing options as you did before, like this chip view option. list view option with name and the detailed option. You can still zoom in and zoom out by scrolling here and make the view to be as big and small as you want. You can also search for Pantone colors by typing in the number or name in the search bar. Other than this, you can also look up for similar colors. So if I select any color, for example, this green color, and if I click on the search by color icon, similar Pantone colors will appear. Now, once you find the color you like from this color window, it will work the same way it used to work. Just select the color and you will see it change in the 3D window in real time. In CLO 7.0, we are introducing the parametric pattern feature to help users to create their own pattern blocks by entering the specs. And the great thing is that even the users without any prior pattern making knowledge can easily work on this and create their own pattern blocks. This feature is located on the editor tab in the main menu and to access it, you need to just click on parametric pattern. Then the parametric editor will appear on your screen and this is where you can input your measurements to create your patterns. There are a few different options for your patterns. For the front and back pattern pieces, you can choose between symmetry, half symmetry or no symmetry at all. If you select the symmetry option, both sides of the pattern will be generated and they will be symmetrically linked. Half symmetry option will create unfolded symmetrical pattern of both front and back. And if you don't check on anything, two half pattern pieces will be created. 
that is a half front and a half back with no symmetry applied. If you like to create the sleeve pattern, you need to check the on option next to the body sleeves and one side of the sleeve will be created. If you want a symmetrical copy, you need to check on the symmetry option. As you can see, there will be measurements inputted when you first open the parametric pattern window. If you ever want to reset these measurements, on the bottom left, there is a reset button. Now let's start to input some measurements. You can reference a multitude of things to create your first draft. Here I'm going to use an old spec sheet. Before I start to type in the front measurements, here is an image of where all of these measurements are taken in relation to the pattern or the garment for the front. Now I will quickly input my measurements. One important thing to note is that next to some measurement points, you will find a total option. Now, if you select this total option, you're choosing to enter the total circumference measurement of the pattern. This will include the measurement of both the front and back patterns. So the value I input will be divided between front and back and the correlated back measurement will be deactivated and grayed out. Now I will input the rest of the measurements. Okay. Now that the front body measurements are done, I will move on to the back body. Here is an image of all the measurements taken in relation to a pattern or a garment for the body back. Now I will quickly input all the back measurements the same way I did for the front body. Once done, I will move on to the sleeves. Here is also an image of all these sleeve measurements you will need. So I will first need to check on the body sleeve option and I will start inputting all the sleeve measurements. I will also check the symmetry option for all my patterns. And lastly, I can select the create button, which you can find at the bottom to create the pattern block and place it on the 2D window. And that's it. I can now start modifying my patterns in order to create my final garment. To increase ease of use of grading tools, we have made some improvements in the 7.0 release. While using edit grading each tool, if you select a point with multiple sizes stacked on top, or close to one another, you will get a drop down. This will allow you to choose the size you wish to edit. Once chosen, you can then use a few different options to edit, either the arrows or your mouse. Another improvement is that we have included some guides for you to use. If you hold shift on your keyboard while moving the points, you will get X, Y and 45 degree axis guides. And if you hold control on your keyboard, you will have the extension of the current pattern outlines. We have also included a precision box option while using the edit grading H tool. While moving the point, if you simultaneously right click, you will then have the precision box allowing you to move the point within a certain distance. We now have included an option when importing a TXF to rotate the grain line back to zero. Here, when I open my DXF, you will see the reset grain angle options. And in there, there are three choices. Maintain original, 270 to zero, and 90 to zero. Maintain original means 
to keep the original grain line direction. So I'm going to select maintain original and you see here that it stayed at 270 and that's where a lot of problems occurred. However, if I open this again and choose the 270 to 0 and my grain line will be then 0. It is important to note that the grain line within the pattern has not changed but the value within the property editor has. The same results will be true when you use the 90 to 0 option. And if the grain line was originally zero, then you can keep maintain original on. This improvement we hope will solve the issue that was occurring when users were bringing in DXF that were made horizontally in other 2D CAD systems and would end up with the incorrect grain line value in Cloak. Another improvement we have made to our grain lines is now you're able to rotate the pattern along the grain line. First, just simply select the pattern using transform pattern tool. Right click and select rotate. And lastly, reset along grain direction. Now this will allow you to quickly adjust the pattern back to its original position. You are now able to export a rule file within Clo. Here I have finished uh, grading this t-shirt and I like to export the rule file. So I'm going to just select file export DXF. I'll give this file a name. Then uh, I will get a pop-up box for the export DXF setting. Here I will have three different type of DXF formats to choose from. I will also have to choose between a graded nest and a rule file. Then there's also scale options that I can choose as well. I will then select OK and save out my DXF and rule file separately. Now I can go into a new project file that doesn't have any grading and I can add in this rule file to quickly and easily add grading to a new file. You now have the ability to import CSV file into the POM tab. This will help you to quickly name your POMs and also add in new POMs within Clo. So here I have already added POM on my garment using POM tool. Now I will go to the file open icon and bring in a CSV file with properly named POMs. Once that's been populated, I can now take these measurements that I've already added in Clo and I can assign them to the correct names. So I can assign these measurements with the center front here and I can do the same for the center back. What's also really nice is that I can just select one of these CSV POM names and assign it to a new POM that I'm creating right now. I can still add in my own POMs. I don't necessarily have to use the CSV POMs that I've added into Clo. Or if I still want to assign it to the CSV POMs, I can. You also have the ability to delete blank POMs that you're not planning to use as well. Now when using the add point split line tool, you will see that there are smart guides on your pattern. You can simply go to add point split line tool and hover anywhere on your patterns 
and you will see these little guides to help you place them in a more accurate way within your 2D pattern. There has been some improvements to the flattening tool within 7.0. Previously, this tool was trying to extract a shape out of the avatar by treating it as a cloth simulation. Now this was causing a lot of calculation time and unexpected bugs. So we have now implemented a new algorithm allowing shorter calculation time and more stability. And this in turn will allow the users to create more accurate patterns with complex shapes. Here you can see um, on this hand, I can create more smaller and complex pattern pieces more efficiently. And after flattening these pieces, my patterns are created faster and with more stability than before. You will now be able to see the outline of your buttons within the schematic render window. You can switch on your schematic render from your 3D toggle menu and you can see how the buttons are now highlighted. You can change the thickness of the line through seam line and you can also change the color as before. In addition to this, you can also add the button thread line now. So first, you can go to your button tab in your object browser. Select the button and then in the property editor, click on the thread tab. Under that, uncheck use the same material as button and finally you can change the color of your thread to any color of your choice. So that's how you add the thread line in schematic render window. You can now move both the avatar and garment together in your 3D space. All you need to do is just select the avatar, right click and select avatar and garment. You can then use your gizmo tool to move the garment and avatar together anywhere within your 3D window. Users now have the option to adjust their 3D background image. Just right click anywhere in the 3D window and you will see the option format 3D background. After that, you can bring in an image using the open file icon. Now next to this open file icon, there is a lock ratio icon, which will allow you to choose whether you want to lock your ratio or unlock the ratio of the image. The lock ratio will maintain the original ratio of that particular image. Now with this function, now you can zoom in and zoom out to easily move and adjust your avatar around in the 3D background and place it where you wish. There have been a few improvements within the colorway mode. The first one being the placement of the colorway editor. Now when you go into the mode section of Flow, you will see that colorway and BOM are no longer there. We still have the colorway editor. It has just been moved to the editor tab at the top main menu. Now when you select editor, you will find BOM, colorway and parametric pattern. A really nice feature that was introduced in this update is the ability to seamlessly move between your 2D window and colorway window very easily using these tabs. You can now edit and adjust your pattern and then switch to your colorway editor to see the updates. Another great update is the ability to see all your texture maps when selecting the icons within the colorway editor. So once you select any of these thumbnails in the property editor, you will see all the maps are there to edit and adjust. Now you can quickly and easily edit your colors, uh, graphics, change texture without having to go into the object browser 
which will speed up your workflow better. Another great update is that we have made it easier to delete graphics or trims or other objects within the colorway editor. All you need to do is right click on them and select the delete icon. Now if they are in use in other colorways, a warning popper will come up. Please keep in mind that this will delete the object from all the colorways. Drag and drop feature has been another improvement to our user's workflow. So you can just drag and drop fabrics into the colorway editor and that will change the fabric texture and maps of that fabric. Now keep in mind that this feature only changes the appearance of the fabric, meaning all the maps of the fabric will be adjusted. However, it does not change the physical or drape properties of any of these colorways. A viewing improvement that we have made to our colorway editor is the ability to show or hide graphics. There is an option here called show hide graphics. Scrolling down, you'll see that I can view all of the graphics that I've used in all of the colorways. However, I can check show hide graphics option on and then I will only see that graphics that I'm using for that one colorway. You can choose whether you would like to see all of the graphics or just the graphics that you have used for that colorway. Another viewing update is the change of the list view and viewer view. Now it is show details as you can see in the bottom right corner. If I unselect this, I will just see the images without the details. I can still select save image button and get the colorway editor image or snapshot of my 3D window. Another improvement is that the file name will be automatically populated with the colorway name. Then just select save to save your snapshot. So this will work for both colorway editor image and snapshot image. You now have the option to show or hide your grading within the print layout mode. In the 2D pattern display icon, you can turn show grading on and off and you will be able to see your grading details in the print layout mode. In version 7.0, you can also see the nesting results in real time. After clicking nest patterns, the system will start to calculate nesting results and display the optimal nesting results that are being calculated currently you will see the changes and updates in real time. As the calculation goes on, if the results are almost unchanged, you can stop the nesting early or you can let the calculation continue. We have made some improvements for the BOM editor. First of all, BOM is no longer available in the mode section. But if you go over to the editor tab in the main menu, you will find BOM editor. You will also be able to seamlessly switch between 2D window and BOM editor. Another great update for our BOM editor is an information icon next to the fabric. It is just letting you know that the print layout is linked to your BOM. So if you update your print layout to the most efficient nesting option, then the pricing will be updated as well. If you nest multiple sizes, then it will take into account the whole nest for all of the sizes. It is not a sample price and it will be more a production price for all of the different sizes. Now I can go back into my BOM editor and update it and see the price change based on the nesting. A final mode improvement is with emulator mode. Now we have updated it so that our stretch force tolerance will allow for 0.005 kgf difference for very high stretch fabrics. 
if you input a number that has a force difference of 0.005 kgf, there will be an information icon next to it. If you hover over it, it will say 0.005 kgf is counted as a very high stretch fabric. If the difference is above 0.005 kgf, this tool icon will be next to it. And if the difference is below 0.005, a warning icon will appear next to it to just let you know that the difference is too low. We are happy to announce that in version 7.0, you are now able to adjust the zipper teeth and tape separately. You can see in the property editor that there are separate tabs for zipper tape and teeth. Now I can just change the color of my teeth to something different and I can also select the tape tab and change its color independently from my teeth. You can also bring in different teeth and tape texture images as well as their maps into your property editor to change the appearance. And all of these maps and textures are found in your hardware entrance folder under zipper. There are a few different types of texture images and normal map images that you can use. There are plastic, metal, and nylon. Please note though, if you edit a zipper from a previous version file, you will need to bring in these texture images and maps of either teeth or the tape so that you can adjust them separately. Another great thing is that you can adjust the material type presets of both tape and teeth separately. So here under the material type, I can select the different types for the tape and teeth separately. We have made a few updates to our binding tools. The first update is the ability to now have binding on both sides of the fabrics. Here, we will apply the binding as normal. And as you can see, adding in the binding is much smoother and easier than before. Uh, make sure to simulate after you have added in the binding to stabilize it. I will then select the binding. And in the property editor, you will see there is an additional option for binding type. Other than under and over, you will find both. This update will allow you to apply the binding on back and front or under and over. I will of course simulate the binding again to update and make sure my garment is stable. Now I will have binding on both under and over uh, of my garment. Another update is applying binding to seam lines. Now in Clo, you will be able to apply binding to edges even if they are sewn. I will apply the binding to the shoulder seam here. Now once applied, Clo will then prompt you to decide which side you would like to apply the binding to. I will then select the side that I want and I will continue as usual. All the binding properties and adjustments will remain exactly the same. We have made a small update to our top stitches within CLO 7.0. You are now able to change the order of top stitches. Using Edit Top Stitch tool, you can select the top stitch you wish to move, then right click and go down to order. Here you will have the option of bring forward, bring to front, send backward, 
and send to back. You will then see the top stitch move based on which the order you selected. We have made some exciting updates to our trims this release. One update is being able to convert patterns to trims. This will be very helpful for decorative trims and also all different types of hardware. Here I have created a butterfly within Clo and would like to convert it to a trim. First I will make sure my texture mapping is unified so that my textures are what I want them to be. Right click on it in the 3D window and select convert to trim. Once I've selected that option, the pattern will be converted to a trim and the pattern will disappear from the 2D window. I will then be able to place it on my garment exactly as I would place any trim. Please note that your trim's weight will be recalculated so you will need to check the weight and edit it appropriately. Another update within the trims is the ability to now duplicate your trims to a symmetric pattern and mirror paste. For that, I will select and right click on the trim and select duplicate to symmetric pattern. As you can see, this has made applying the second trim on the symmetric pattern infinitely easier and faster. You can also now mirror paste your trim in your 3D window. Here, I will select the butterfly, right click and copy it. Then I will right click and select mirror paste. And then the shadow of the trim will show up allowing me to decide exactly where I'd like to place this. In Close 7.0, you can add buttons to internal lines again. I will first select the internal line using my Transform Pattern tool. Then I'll go into the Add Button tool from the 3D toolbar and right click on top of the internal line. And then the button popper will appear. And here I can decide how I want to distribute my buttons throughout this internal line. Once I'm happy with the result, I will click OK and you will see all of the buttons on the internal line in the 3D and 2D window. I can continue to edit and adjust my button from my button property editor. A very exciting improvement to Clo 7.0 is the color switch in our texture editor. The color switch will allow you to edit individual colors within prints and graphics. So I will demonstrate this on this graphic right now. I will select the graphic layer and I will then check on color switch. Then I will type in the number of colors I'd like to switch. Then I will hover over those color and you will see it highlight. And now I can select the color and in the color window I can change those colors. Then select apply and close and that will update in the colorway editor. I can do the same thing for this next colorway on the exact same graphic. I will go back to multi texture editor, select the graphic layer, type in the number of colors, then hover over the color that you'd like to switch, select it and with the color window, I can change it to any color. I, I can adjust the graphic however I like to, and it will only affect that one color way. I can also do the exact same thing for print. So here I can select the print fabric and I can go back to the multi texture editor, check on the color switch, Type in the number of colors within that print. Select the colors and change. I can also check on the blur box which will make the colors a little bit sharper as it will give a larger blur to the edges so it will give a smoother finish. After this, I can go through and edit and adjust it exactly as I want for this colorway. Lastly, I will select apply and close. 
Once finished, I can then review this in my colorway editor and see if there are any changes I would like to make. We have updated our layout and for our library, we now have a tree structure. Starting with Close 7.0, our library will have a tree structure within it where you can expand and collapse icon to open folders. We believe the structure will make navigation and organization a little bit easier and faster within Clo. As you can see, you can use these drop down tools to see all of the subfolders you have. And if you don't have a subfolder, the icon will no longer appear to drop down. Another improvement we have made is the object browser also has a tree structure. Over here in the scene tab in the object browser, you will see a similar layout of a tree structure now. You will also see icons describing which major section is. These drop down icons will appear when there are subfolders or sub information underneath it. So you will also be able to hide and show different sections, allowing you to stay more organized while working in Clo. And this update is not only more user friendly, but it will also enable multiple feature access in one concentrated area. Another update we have made is adding solidify to the color options within our UI settings. So now if I select solidify on this garment, I can then go into my user settings and go into user interface and change the solidify color to any color I'd like. As you can see, if I select this pink, it will update automatically on the garment. We have also updated our open garment option. So now when you bring in a garment file, you will have this option to either maintain the current avatars post or use the garment files avatar post. If you select open size and post from the garment file option, the avatar post will change to what that garment files post was. Lastly, another UI update is with our thumbnail image of our fabric in the object browser. So when I adjust and change this fabric around, you will see that the thumbnail also updates. So when I'm using the edit texture tool, rotating and adjusting this fabric, it will automatically rotate and adjust and update the thumbnail in the object browser as well. In 7.0, fur maximum length has been updated. So in the previous versions, you were able to increase the fur length up to 254 mm. Now in this release, you can increase it to maximum of 1000 mm. For those who works in inches, that's 40 inches. Before explaining how to do this, I'm going to open the render window to preview the fur immediately because the fur preset is only shown in the render view. Here, you will see the fur length is all set. Now I will go into my fur property and change it to maximum fur length that is possible. So here I will enter the maximum value of 1000 mm. You can see that the length of the fur has been increased through the interactive render. As you may already know, the longer the fur length, the more meshes you need to render. So eventually the render time will increase. So please refer to that if you want to go to this extreme it will take you more time to render out. We would like to introduce you to the Clo Discord channel. The official Clo server has been opened on Discord, a community platform. Now on Discord Clo official server, you can receive various Clo news, tips, materials, and you can talk freely with Clo users to share tips and industry news. You can access Discord through PC web browser, mobile app, and an invitation link. We will release a QR code right here that allows access to the Discord Clo official server. 
So if you'd like to join, please scan the QR code to join the Discord Clow official server. For more rules and explanation, you can check out our Discord channel. We look forward to meeting various Clow users from around the world through this official Discord Clow server and using it as a meaningful place to share information with each other. We hope you enjoyed this webinar and got to learn something new today. Thank you so much for watching.